Good morning and welcome to Real Estate 360. This is uh, Steve Connolly with... I am Mr. Jason O. Miles, hashtag the real estate trainer, hashtag... Unemployable. My man. And hey, guess what today? We have another really exciting show. You know, we, we want to give you a lot of insights as to what's happening. You know, we're not going to talk about the economy uh, Mr. Jason O. Miles wants to, really wants to talk about this inverted yield curve. I don't know, you know, whatever. But, you know, what what's really important is what does it mean to you and what does it mean to me and, and the other people who are real estate inv- and you too. I'm not going to leave you out. No, no, please don't. Please, please. So, I need to be in there. So we're going to talk about trends and opportunities that it re- as it relates to the overall economy, yes. right? Yes, yes. So we know what the, the stock market's going to do. We know what the market's going to do. We know what the economy's going to do, right? We know. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? You sound like Zoltar right now. Zoltar. You're going to give us all the answers. Give me a quarter. <laughs> 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 but we need to feed Zoltar. Okay. All right. Well, here's here's the one thing that we know <laughs> about the economy. It's and and the stock market. All of it. It's going to go up, and it's going to go down. That's right. So now. What do you do with all that information? <laughs> you got to use it, right? You got to utilize the information. But you know what? What happens under most certain uh, most circumstances is that people start to just panic. You know, there's just panic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have to understand when you're looking at these huge swings in the market, everybody's worried about their money. Yep, us individual guys, the little guys, we're always the last ones in and the last ones out. Right. The institutional money is in first and out first. They're the ones that dictate the market. So it's not a matter of panicking. It's understanding which way to go right? and what to look for. Exactly. And it's, it's also kind of stepping back a little bit. If you're so close to the action and you're looking, you know, at the minute by minute, say you're watching your daily chart on mm-hmm. your stock market and it's going up and down and mm-hmm. up and down, you know, you can't really see the big picture. No. You know, Not when you're all. looking at the one day. That's right. You know, <laughs> even and, if you're looking at a year or even a 10 year, obviously, in the, in the past 10 years, yeah, uh, the market has gone up significantly, right? Yes. So, but at the same time, you can't expect those kinds of returns to continue. There has to be a market correction. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and so, like you were just talking about that yield curve, we were having this discussion before the inverted yield curve, which looks like we're on our way to. Yeah. It doesn't mean. You know, head for the hills, get to high ground and protect yourself. Right. In, in in some ways, yes, but it means, okay, what strategies are available available to me, you know, in under these conditions? What else can I do? What is available that will allow me to continue to make money or allow my money to grow passively? Because really that's who we're talking about. We're not talking about day traders. Right. You know, we're not talking about any specific industry because it affects all of us. It does. You know, but but let's talk about the real estate industry. Absolutely. Now. So so even with that, you know, yeah. so, so what's what? going on in the real estate market right now? Prices are kind of coming down. There's yeah, this is supply demand thing. There's a bigger supply. There's less demand. Yeah, the interest rates are low. So you know, but people are they're not buying. They're not buying. They're refinancing. But that has to do with the psychology of the buyers in the market today. They're afraid. They are afraid because yeah. you also have to remember, yeah. you know, these are the 30-somethings that are buying this stuff. They These 30-somethings watch their parents and their grandparents go through absolute turmoil during the crisis. A lot of people lost a lot of money. They did. So it changes the way people think, the next generation in particular. It changes the way they think. Think about, you know, the children of the uh, people who went through the the real depression. Yeah. You know? After that, people didn't want to put their money in banks. There was a lot of mattress money out there. <laughs> yeah, but those those guys are kind of dropping off the planet. You know, it's been a long time. Well, absolutely, <laughs> but it's the mentality, though. Yeah, it's it the is. mentality, right? They didn't want to do certain things. You know, they only wanted to invest in things that they knew weren't going to go anywhere, like energy stocks right. that also pay dividends. Sure. And they didn't believe in banks, a lot of them. They just didn't do it. Now, today, you have to have banks. Yeah, because, no kidding. You know, I mean, if you're running around... With a thousand dollars in your pocket, you know you're subject to questioning. <laughs> so we're getting we're getting really close to a cashless society, which is a whole other conversation. So real estate now, what I'm seeing is that 
there's, you know, there's always other forces and other things going on with real estate. You yeah, know, like yeah. we we're we're like kind of the southwest area of Atlanta because of the gentrification and the value variations are huge. Yeah, and but you know, there's also big challenges down there with the historic. Oh yeah, situation and the the city of Atlanta is let's just say less than efficient. Yeah. And, and uh, not usually that pleasant to deal with. That's right. <laughs> you know? But the community in general as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, because a lot of Same. people don't want the change that's occurring. I mean, we've seen taxes go on some of the houses that we bought from $400 a year to $3,000 a year. You know, I was sitting in front of a house. You know, I was doing the thing, you know, with the, you know, the Waze app, you know, to find out <laughs> where I'm going next. And I'm just sitting in front of this house, and this guy comes out. In that community, and I'm just kind of responding to what you were just saying. Yeah, yeah. He comes out, and he's walking up down the sidewalk, and he looks agitated, you know? And um, so he, he looks over at, at me and come, comes up to the car and says, can I help you? I said, no, I don't think so. You know, I'm like, no, yeah, I don't need any help. I'm just sitting on the street. You know, I'm not in anybody's driveway or anything. Yeah. I'm just sitting there on the side, you know, just trying to figure out what I'm doing. You, you know, you've done it. Yeah, oh, yeah. And he said, well, you know, you people are down here buying up this neighborhood. And, uh, you know, I, 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 live, I live right next door to this house. I was looking at the house next door to his. I went right down down here, and I, and I don't like it, you know. Yeah. And I'm thinking, man, this guy's missing the boat, you know. Yeah. I, I couldn't explain it to him or talk to him because, you know, he had his head full of whatever. Right, right. You know, but. Man, I'd be like, "Come on, people, mm -hmm. buy this stuff. Push the prices up." I'm, you know, I've been, I've been here. My house has been worth fifty thousand dollars forever. Now it's going to be worth two hundred and fifty thousand. Right. And so, what if it goes down a little bit? And so, you have to have your spidey sense on a little bit, right? We That's talked exactly about that. Right. That's exactly <laughs> right. You know, people can fight change all they want. It's, you know, it's going to happen. Obviously, in this country, yeah, uh, and all around the world, for that matter, we have a very significant issue as it relates to affordable housing. But, you know, the definition of affordable housing is different from, from city to city, region to region, country to country. Yes, when we're is. looking at situations where, I mean, in any major city, really, around America, may, and I'm specifically talking about major cities, when you're in the downtown area, five miles outside of the center of downtown, it's all expensive all around that downtown area. Yeah. Atlanta is one of the only cities that I know of in major cities in this country that I know of. And I've pretty much been to all of them where there are parts, you know, like, okay, if we're looking at yeah. Atlanta, downtown Atlanta <laughs> on a clock, right? The center is a clock. Right. From about six o'clock, maybe five thirty to nine o'clock. Yeah. Is all still available. It's still all affordable, but that's changing. Southwest Atlanta. That's right. West, west and southwest Atlanta. That's right. Yeah. And, and if you go a little bit further south, still within the clock, yeah. southeast. Oh, absolutely. You know, pa down, parts of it. But we know that's changing quite a bit. Yeah. And, no, you know, but. And I'm then, talking of about course, the yeah. southern part of southeast. You well, know, the south, Kyle, southeast. Like, south, southeast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, south, southeast. Yeah. But, yeah, that's, I mean, it's you have to expect that being so close to downtown. But I get it. I get the argument as well. But you can't fight it. You know, even in our local uh, politics, you know, we have a, a mayor, you know, and people that are sitting in um, power positions and leadership positions in our, in our city that want affordable housing. They want to keep this stuff in place. Right. They don't want people to be pushed out and displaced, right. which is understandable. But at the same time, you can't tax the people that live in those communities you know, a billion and a half dollars. Right. Uh, and expect them to pay for something that they're never going to be able to afford to live in. Yeah, you don't want to tax those people out. But it's But, you know, done. you talked about what California has done, which is. Absolutely. Uh, put in a, uh, whatever they, a proposition, yeah, resolution. A proposition whatever. something or other. Right. But California's done it. New York has done it. Yeah. Um, and they have had something in place, and they recently redid that. Yeah. They restructured those things to, to make sure that people can live. Pretty much where, not wherever they want, but wherever they are, you know? Yeah. And, and and stay there, at least for some amount of time. I want to go back to what you were saying, which is, you know, within the city of of Atlanta, there are quite a bit of affordable properties at the moment. Mm -hmm. 
But, you know, with all the influx of the industry and Hollywood in particular, yeah. I think, and uh, just all the, cor- you know, there's tons and tons of corporate offices. Everybody talks about Amazon, you know. But, yeah. You know, there's IBM, there's Intercontinental Hotels, there's HP, there's... The Metropolitan Atlanta it's just goes, has... It's crazy. It's Metropolitan like, Atlanta has 13 or 14... Yeah. Uh, Fortune 100 companies headquartered here. They're North American headquarters. You know, that's 13, 14% of the most expensive industries, uh, companies, excuse me, on the planet are headquartered right here in the metropolitan area. So my overview point about that is those properties, all of them are not going to be affordable. No. Not for very much longer, (laughs) you know. No. It just doesn't make any sense that they wouldn't be because... People want to be close to where the action is, and that's down, you know, kind of close to downtown mm-hmm. Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Right. And so we're going to do a little bit more Spidey Sense thing in a, in a few minutes, and right now we're going to go to a commercial break. I'm tingling. We'll buy your house. Click 833-WILLBUY.COM. That's 833-W-E-L-L-B-U-Y.COM. Or call 833-WILL-BUY. Se habla español. Llámanos. Call us today. And uh, we are back. And listen, you know, I've been taking the lead a little bit because, you know, Mr. Jason O'Miles has some dental surgery. And uh, <laughs> you can't tell, but I can. He's... He's on some pretty good meds right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm feeling, feeling pretty I'm, good. I'm really feeling, um, uh, what was that, uh, floating? I'm floating. I'm floating. <laughs> I'm floating a bit. But I, I got to say this real quick. Yeah. Listen, guys, if you like the show, and I know you do, and I'm thankful for you listening. I know Steve's thankful for you listening. Everyone here is thankful for you listening. Make sure you go to iTunes or uh, Google Play or Spotify and uh, uh, YouTube um, leave comments. You know, we like to see that. We like to see the engagement. You know, we want to know what you're thinking. It doesn't matter if you love the show or hate the show. You know, if you hate Steve and love Miles, definitely tell me that. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, And don't tell me. I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, you know, engage with us. Let us know what you like, what you don't like, what you want to hear, what you're interested in. You know, what kind of points that people want to hear. Because, you know, we like to think we know what people want to hear. But there's nothing better than to hear it. From the people that are listening, because they want to hear it. They, they know what they want to hear. So share it with us. We want to know. Go to iTunes. Go to Spotify. Go to YouTube and watch us. You can see how handsome I am. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, listen, along those lines, not the handsome part, but uh, the communication part, um, we were talking about starting a, a meetup mastermind group with high net worth individuals. And when I say high, I mean $2 million and up. Right. And we're going to do that. And yeah. so not everybody can get in. You know, you have to have a net worth of like $2 million and up. That's why we're going to yeah. call it that. And so I'm going to give you my phone number if you're interested to call me. I'm going to give you my personal cell phone number right now. 678-665-7215. Easy, man. Can you repeat that? Yes. 678-665-7215. And listen, if you want to call me about anything else, go ahead, you know. I'll answer the phone. If I can't, you know, maybe I'm in the shower. I can't always. That's why they have voicemail, right? Yeah. So we're going to get more into. So I got to know, though. What? what uh... Yeah. Oh, let me tell you more about that. Yeah, yeah. Listen, Napoleon Hill wrote a book a while back called um, Think and Grow Rich. Mm-hmm. It didn't say go get three jobs, save your money, and, and, go, and get rich. It said, think and grow rich. Mm -hmm. And in that book, he says, specifically, two minds creates a third more powerful mind. Right. And, you know, you and I see that all the time. Right. We see, you know, I'll say this, you'll say that, and then all of a sudden something else will come in. So along those lines, we want, um, oh, we want to get more big thinkers together to create, you know, more third minds, basically. Right. That's pretty much it. And there, I'm seeing opportunity everywhere. And I'm not talking about just real estate, but just, you know, things that are opening up. Hang on, I, got, I can't read this. So that says, want is the only prerequisite to get what you want. Okay, good. It just means that you have to want it, and you really have to want it bad. <clears throat> now, 
how that's relevant here is we're we're talking about people uh, of a certain net worth, two million or, or greater, right? right? Now, it doesn't matter if if you are an entrepreneur, if you are a business owner, or if you are an employee of some other corporation with that kind of net worth. The reality of it is, you're always concerned with preserving your capital, uh, but growing it at the same time and growing it safely. Mm-hmm. Some people are a little more aggressive than others, but knowing what your options are will will give you the ability to go ahead and, and do the things that you want to do. A lot of people simply just don't know what their options are. A lot of people put their money into CDs because they have no idea where else to put it. You right. know, what is the purpose of keeping your money in a money market account or a savings account? It's, it's fear. It is fear. It's fear of losing it. That's right. Right? The, so the purpose <clears throat> is to alleviate the fear. Exactly. And there are so many options and opportunities out there. You simply have to be aware of them. Yeah. And I think that's the whole purpose of this group. Exactly. And by the way, you know, what we have learned and found out is that if you look around and you look at your five best friends and what they're earning, you're going to be earning about what they're earning. Mm-hmm. So in order to stretch Beyond that, you need a different set of people to hang with. That's exactly right. I've got five people already, you know, lined up for this group. So you're, it's just not going to be you, me, and Miles, you know, whoever you are out there. <laughs> right, right. It's, you know, I've got a, quite a few, you know, contacts in that range. And, hey, we're all looking to improve. We're looking to mm-hmm. up the game. Mm-hmm. I remember a story from Anthony Robbins who's, who was talking to this guy. He said, man, I'm, a, I'm only at like $20 million a month. Or a year or something, I can't remember. Well, a year, maybe. It's a rough life. I know, terrible. <laughs> and he said, well, and the first thing Anthony says, well, who are, you, who are you, what's your mentor group look like? And specifically, he said, who are the people that you meet with once a week? And how, what are their ranges? And it was like zero, you know, or whatever, a couple million to 20 million. It was, so that was at the top. He said, well, you got to get another group. You know, you got to get one where they're 100 million. And he, he joined a $100 million group. And he almost immediately doubled what mm-hmm. he was making. So, mm-hmm. and, and listen, I'm mad living because I don't remember the specific that's numbers. Right. But but that's true, though, That's Steve. the idea. Yeah. You know. I mean, when you're around, let's take it back to energy. When you're around that energy yeah. and people that are vibrating on a certain frequency, you have no choice but to fall in line with that frequency or you're going to, you know, fall off. Right. You're going to be gone, yeah. you know, away from that frequency because your frequency is what it is and it doesn't align with. What exactly. everyone else is. And this group is not going to be open to everybody. You know, yeah. you got to qualify, and it's going to be $100 a month. If $100 is a challenge, you know, you're probably not worth it. I mean, there are mastermind groups out here that are charging, you know, <sighs> enormous amounts of money plus a monthly membership fee, which is thousands far, of exactly. dollars. Exactly. Thousands of exactly. dollars. I mean, there's and one. And it's worth it. It is worth it. And, uh, and $100 <laughs> is a nominal fee. It's nothing. Just to kick things off, you know. That's nothing. I mean, right. and it's not just saying that because we want $100 from no. people. That's not what it is at all. It's simply saying that there is a value to what is offered. And everyone should value everyone for what's being offered. Yeah. Period. And, and what you can offer. Exactly. And uh, outside of that, then what's the purpose? There's no purpose. We're here to all do better, right? And if we're going to argue about Happy Meal money... <laughs> you know, that's not the group we want to be in. I was at McDonald's on my way back from Florida um, Monday. And I'm in line. You know, I've got this abundance thing going right now. I'm just like, wow. I just feel fantastic, you know. And I'm in line, and this guy's kind of in line with He's on his cell phone and stuff. And so I order, you know, my little whatever. And she, the lady said, oh, that guy right there just paid for your breakfast. Mm-hmm. I said, okay, cool, <laughs> you know. And I said, are you paying it forward? He said, yep. I said, okay. Mm-hmm. I, I'm under the gun now. I've got to pay it forward. That's right. You know? But that's that's what we got to do, man. I mean, those those little small acts of kindness that, that show you that there are people out there that think like you and, and a lot of the others. And does it happen every day? I mean, not to us every day, right. but it does happen every day. And, you know, we have that thing that we put on the graphic that you made. I I think I came up with it or heard it or something. Uh, it, in order to get hit by the money train, yes, you have to stand on the tracks. And that was your saying. I just made a graphic. Yeah, and you made a great graphic. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so we, 
So we need to, but we also need to, you know, stick with the Spidey sense thing, and uh, and make sure you know we're standing back. <laughs> and, oh my goodness! <laughs> and you know, you would never cease the to big, amaze. <laughs> wide views, you know. I've been throwing these little clues out there, you know, <laughs> that. Uh, I thought you watched the movie last night. Yeah, I know you did, probably. <laughs> so, so, you know, get your spidey glasses on and get out there and start looking around, and you'll start, things will start to show up, you know. And join the mastermind group, you know. We're going to have a seminar coming up, too, that That's we'll right. talk about in, in segment four. But in, in preparation for that group and in preparation for anything else that you guys do out there, uh, and I know we're, we're kind of off topic, but it's really not. It's, it's about real estate it's about whatever it is you do in your daily life your mindset is most important stop telling yourself how hard things are stop telling yourself you can't do this stop telling yourself all that negative stuff right just believe it's going to get done don't you don't have to even know how it's going to get done <laughs> just believe just know and it's, you have to know it it has to be literally in your dna you got to know it i don't know how and stop listening to the negative news you know Yes, uh, things are going up and things are going down. They always do. You know what? This it's the volatility that creates the opportunities. Right. You know, uh, so we've got right. people that have gotten into real estate that we've known about, or maybe we've sold them houses and they get frustrated because of the permitting process or whatever. And every moment of every day, there's somebody that needs help. With real estate, they need to sell, they need to buy, they, they need to finance, they need something. So all this volatility just does nothing but one thing, it creates opportunity. And everybody that's listening to this has lived through that already. Yeah. You know, when we talk about transition phases, yeah. you know, we're talking about uh, most recently what happened in, the, in our recent recession, you know, which we started to see in 07, 08, but everyone else started to feel it in 9 and 10. Right. And that's when... You know, people had all kind of different names for it. We saw super, super wealthy people uh, that would never touch single families start buying up single families in mass. Right. Right. But that was the transfer. That was that was the transition. That's when we were looking at all this money that was in the market. People started to lose it, but it was the opportunity for people that did have a little bit of money, and not just the super wealthy went in and bought everything up. People that knew how to get in and navigate. Through Absolutely. that storm, made a ton of money. And they're cashing in, and they've been cashing in for the last couple of years. <laughs> yeah. But listen, you know, if you need to, get on to YouTube <laughs> and see what Spidey Sense looks like. Yeah, you got to watch it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and we are going to have uh, our super realtor, uh, Sammy Hadid, on in the next segment. He's going to talk about. Habibi! Yeah, man. And he's going to talk about. Real estate trends and, you know, using him as a realtor because he's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. We yeah. don't always agree. It's Sammy and I. Well, I mean, do, does anyone always agree on everything? Right. But, yeah. you know, you, you can't have the, you know, the tail wagging the dog. Right? <laughs> That's for sure. That doesn't work. That's for sure. <laughs> All right. Let's take a break. Yeah. Let's do Do you need to sell your house? Well, our company will buy, will buy your house. We make the process very fast, very easy, and it's all cash. All you have to do is give us a call today. We'll buy your house. Click 833willbuy.com. That's 833-W-E-L-L-B-U-Y.com. Or call 833willbuy. Se habla español, llámanos, call us today. Welcome back again to Real Estate 360, Steve Connolly and Jason Miles and Sammy Hadid, superstar man. realtor. All right. right. As always, it's a pleasure to be with you, gentlemen. It's a pleasure beautiful here, day. Man. It's a beautiful day to sell real estate. So I got to tell you, I got, I have a million questions for you, Sammy. I know we have a, a little bit of time, but you know, I know that Steve has some questions as well. Yes, so I do. I, I would actually like to start there. Fire away, uh, uh, and that way I can kind of just slide in the ones that I have. Oh, you uh, want me to ask? You want me to start asking them questions? Yeah, yeah. Because right, I want so. I want mine to be relevant in, in in relation to the direction of the conversation and not get off topic. Well, really, I just I'd like to for Sammy to talk about Sammy. You know, all right, and what makes him the unique realtor that he is? Can you do that? 
Oh, you mean talk about myself in a positive manner? Yes, yeah. of course. I start guess. On, I start at the that. beginning. You were you were born by the river in a little tent. Oh yeah, a little van uh, <laughs> down there. You know, yeah, life was rough, but we we pulled through. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, born and raised here in Atlanta, and an ATLian, local native. Baby. You don't meet many of them anymore. Oh, I'm so proud to say that. I'm so proud of this city, and this city has always been cool, and it's only getting cooler and cooler right That's now. Right. Well, not the weather, of course. Yeah, but, uh, we're going to have a heat wave. The energy around it, of course, has been <laughs> amazing. Yeah, so I love Atlanta, and um, I was I went to the University of Georgia as well. So uh, UGA. local all around. UGA, baby. Oh, yeah. National champions this year, actually. All right. Yeah, baby. That's what's up. And then uh, after that, I uh, was in entertainment. I did stand-up comedy for years, which is wonderful. And then uh, after that, I was an actor for a long time, and I'm still an actor on the, to this day wow. when something wonderful pops yeah. up. So uh, speaking of the entertainment piece, you have to tell people what we were doing together before you lost all the weight. What we were doing together Is before. it a secret? Can I, can I go ahead and just break the secret? Can I'm, I let it out? I'm dying to know, please. So Sammy and I are the founders of the Chunkendales, and uh, he doesn't like to admit it, but uh, he and I had a stint out in Vegas for a year or so, and uh, we started the Chunkendales, and then, you know, he lost weight and kind of broke up the duo. Ah, you know. All good things come to an end. Although I will say, Jason was the most popular part of the show. That's right. You know, that's right. There's a lot mm, to hug. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Still got the moves, baby. Ah, uh, yeah, that was in there. That was part of my life as well. <laughs> Allow me to bring the conversation back to real estate. Now, Please. listen. The reason that that Sammy's on the show here is because he is a uh, go beyond realtor, and you yeah. know his language reveals who he is you know what at one of the other shows that we had you said something like i will protect your property with my life yes and that's a holy moly you know that's a pretty strong statement well we've witnessed it yeah <laughs> you know oh i know and that is something i genuinely genuinely believe in you know we it's our job out there to go out and help our sellers not only get their properties sold but to make sure that nobody takes advantage of them mm -hmm. and nobody even being uh, you know buyer's agent sometimes you know buyer's agent will send you an inspection report and ask for fifteen thousand dollars off or nonsense yeah, yeah it's my job to protect my seller to make sure that they're not being taken advantage of. that's right one of those things that that i really like how you do <clears throat> what you do excuse me is um when we do get a contract on the property and the inspection report comes back in particular i really like how you go through that with the buyer's agent and you go i mean there might be 50 things on there and then you go say okay what can your client live with yes and what can they not you know live with without having done oh absolutely. specifically on the, that one property we had in on inman yeah yeah you know um beautiful property by the way they did a phenomenal job yeah. renovating it miles you did a fantastic job i was uh you know i mean hey well, i mean yeah uh, that, that was beautiful. Talent. Brought a tear to my eye. Oh, my eye, gosh. You guys are making me feel some kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> so there was an issue there, and Sammy says, well, why don't you guys just give a, a credit? Yeah. Yes. And that was like, duh. I mean, that credit, that, and that was a $1,000 credit, by the way, yes, on something was. that would have probably cost us six or $7,000 to Could fix. Could have. Maybe, Could have. You know. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. My job is to make the seller's life easier. Yeah. And the first thing that I'll always say is, you know, why don't we throw out an amount just so you don't have to deal with contractors and worry about getting these repairs done and mm -hmm. having it reinspected? You know, it's a total headache. Mm -hmm. So my first suggestion will always be to, you know, let's contribute a little bit of money to closing costs mm -hmm. or things of that nature. But in the, in the sense where something has to be done, uh, I will go through it and only suggest to my seller things that are must, you know, mm -hmm. as opposed to all these little ticky tack things that a lot of buyers agents like to bring out. I think that's great. Um, and thank you for that. I mean, I, I don't know how you put those services together or the process, I should say, but it, it really works. Uh, so my next question is this. I mean, we spoke last time you were here about, you know, what you were seeing and, and how you were navigating through some of those things. And, and, uh, since that time, knowing that there have been obviously some changes going on, yes, can you explain uh, about what those changes are and how you have tailored or further tailored your process to accommodate 
The sure. needs of, of the uh, buying and selling public? Certainly, absolutely. So <laughs> I'm more than happy to, sir, more than happy. So right now in the market, as you have mentioned a couple times during the show, there is a, a decrease now. I'm seeing properties uh, just maybe 10 minutes away from Pond City Market where eight months ago they would have sold for 275000 no problem, sold over the weekend. Mm. Now they're being reduced to as low as maybe 235 to oh, 245 wow. And these are renovated properties. Mm. And are they selling in a weekend even at the lower price? No, no. They're, they're, they're just continuing to sit. I actually took a buyer out in that area recently, and uh, the minute she hearted somebody through the portal, which if you're a buyer, I can make your life so much easier. Uh, she hearted it through the portal, which means she liked it. Okay. And immediately, I, and I kid you not, within a couple of hours, I get an email from the listing agent telling me that his seller is super motivated mm. and saw that my buyer had liked the property right away, letting me know that they're willing to take more of a cut on the price just mm -hmm. to get it sold. And mm -hmm. these are renovated houses 10 minutes from Atlanta that you can Airbnb and make your money back, no problem. Mm -hmm. you know? So... There is a, a change, and I think it's only going to get better for buyers in the future because, as you mentioned, the interest rates are so low. And at the same time, we're coming into an election year, which means historically yeah. prices will come down even more. That's correct. So, uh, And that's for our, that point right there for the investors that are listening or anybody that's going to be selling a property in the upcoming months. You need to really prepare yourself for that. If you're buying properties right now to renovate and wholesale, you really, really, really need to make very, very conservative offers because where the prices are today are not going to be where they are in six months. Not at and, all. and you need to prepare yourself for that. Do not pay too much. Be as aggressive on the downside as you can possibly be as a buyer. Make sure you're doing everything you can to control your costs and timelines for your renovation and get that thing listed at what will be a very competitive price in, you know, the next three, six, nine months. Because if you're not, you're going to be overpriced and you're going to be sitting there trying to figure out, you know, what, what you need to do. Sammy, you know, you've already, you know, sold me on you, of course, you know. I mean, just during the show. So tell everybody now how they get in touch with you because I'd like to, for you to get that in twice. Yeah, Absolutely. That's a good idea. If you'd way. like to get in touch with me, I'm always available to you. And as uh, we've mentioned, I will protect you. With my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Maybe that, jump in front of the bullet. Or, or, or do you mean the real estate? You know, I carry, I carry two guns with me all the time, baby. You know, one to the right, one to the left, right? <laughs> you want to get a hold of me, please call me on my cell. 305-978-4249 is my cell. If I don't answer, please leave a voicemail. Again, I'm sorry, that was... What was that number? Again, uh, 305. 305. Yes, uh, Miami number. They don't make those anymore. I'm not getting rid of it. That's right. <laughs> 305 978 4249 is my cell. And uh, of course, you can find me on Google as well. Google Sammy Hadid Real Estate. Look over some of my reviews. And, Spell uh, that Sammy Hadid Real Estate. S A M M Y H A D I D Real Estate. And, and, I'm a, and you're on Instagram. Facebook, all that stuff as well. Instagram, Facebook, all the good stuff. Sammy Hadid Real Estate on Instagram. And, of course, just uh, look up Sammy Hadid on Facebook, and I'll pop up there as well. I, I like your stuff on Instagram and Facebook. Your videos are, are, are entertaining. <laughs> I try to. You know, real estate can be boring sometimes, yeah. so it's important to interject it's good some to have humor, a twist, man. like you guys. You know? It's good to have a twist. Absolutely. You know, real estate doesn't have to be a, a drag all the time, especially if uh, things are slow. You know, a little marketing thing. Uh, I didn't know that you were a stand-up comedian. For a while. You didn't know? What am I? No. I'm a clown. I'm a funny guy. Yeah, I no idea. Did I make you laugh? No. <laughs> what do I amuse you? <laughs> well, this, this guy who was a mentor, you know, was uh, helping a, a guy who was selling uh, uh, inter uh, com uh, credit card processing. You know, mm. boring, right? Mm. Found out he was a stand-up comedian. He said, stop talking about the credit card stuff at networking meetings. Just stand up and tell a joke. <laughs> And uh, he did. His business like went through the roof. Yeah, you know? uh, because it's uh, about so being, some, being personable, some. right? You know. Yeah, that's right. It's being personable. You know. You know. Whatever can go wrong in real estate always goes wrong. Mm -hmm. So it's important that you have a realtor that just kind of takes it with you, can kind of make it a little lighter, and just can reassure that the property is going to handle itself, that it's going to get closed. Because of course, if my name is in front of the house and it doesn't close, I, I take that very, very much to heart, very yeah. personally, because that's yeah. an opportunity that I didn't take advantage of. So I'm very proud to say that the properties that I take on, I'm always truthful. 
and that they always do sell with the exception that you won't see my name next to a lot of expires or withdrawn mm -hmm. at all. Which is solid. So Ooh, that's how, powerful. Say that again. It is. Say that one more time. You will not <laughs> see my name in front of houses that have expired or withdrawn because I do everything possible in regards to communication uh, to get the property sold, to keep my sellers informed of what's yeah. going on in the market. So you're a full-time realtor. You're not one of the 98% of the realtors out there that are sort of weekend realtors. No, I'm, I'm a full-time realtor. Uh, I'm not married yet, so work <laughs> work is my true love. And uh, like I said, I enjoy doing it, especially with people that are as pleasant as uh, you guys, of up. course, right? And make you so let me hit the, the most eligible realtor <laughs> right. bachelor in Atlanta. Yeah, baby. So <laughs> real, quickly, real quickly, what should... Uh, sellers be doing right now with what they have now in terms of in terms of being competitive in the market okay so the biggest mistake sellers are making now is they're pricing their properties based on comps from six months ago to a year ago mm. but they have to understand that the market is is coming down about 20 percent uh, I would say at least 15 at the moment so don't live in the past and price it accordingly That's please don't solid. do that you're gonna sit on the market so long please yeah. I like that. I like that. You know, if you, if you knock it off 20%, again, we're talking about being conservative. It was 306, eight months ago. Right. You know, 275. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's cut for a break. We'll buy your house. Click 833willbuy.com. That's 833-W-E-L-L-B-U-Y.com. Or call 833-WILL-BUY. Se habla español, llámanos, call us today. Okay, welcome back. Roll State 360 and Steve Connolly and Jason O. Miles and... Sammy Hadid, That's superstar right. real estate. Superstar. Superstar. So we decided to keep him on, you know, for another segment. So we Actually, he be... forced us to. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> no. you know. He held his hostage with those he guns those of his. Guns. That's right. <laughs> you, you don't want any more broken teeth, do you, Jason? No, 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 Come please on, no. <laughs> so you just have to talk about it to me. I'm afraid. You, you win. <laughs> yeah, baby, check those out. Mmm, pythons. <laughs> so, you know, we've been talking about uh, trends, and uh, what Sammy brought to the table in the last segment was, you know, pretty much consistent with what we've been talking about. It There's trends. There's, the market goes up. The market goes down. And it's just recognizing those opportunities. That's right. Yeah. So when we, <clears throat> when we talk about trends, again, to go back to what we talked about earlier in this show, people lose their minds when, thing, when change of this of this type occur and this it's not about being uncomfortable it's about as you just said it's about recognizing it and shifting your mindset towards whatever it is whatever the energy is that's going on it you know i, I said something earlier that this is kind of a fear-based mm -hmm. business mm -hmm. and it's and i started thinking about that it's really a fear-based economy i mm -hmm. mean everything and if people react to the slightest little thing you know with Oh God, I got to sell, you know, I got to buy. But uh, if you step back and just have, take some deep breaths, mm -hmm. you know, and there's, then you'll just see all the opportunities. Mm -hmm. You won't be so focused on loss. That's right. You know, and it's as simple as that. I mean, yeah. it really is as simple as that. It's that mindset. It's just not getting overwhelmed and I'm not by saying, what's going on. I'm not saying I'm, I'm immune to that because I've certainly experienced all of that, you yeah. know? Yeah. Back in 2010, I had kind of stepped out of the market, you know, the real estate market, because I didn't, you know, I didn't see an opportunity for a moment. Mm -hmm. And this guy calls me up and says, hey, Steve, you know, you should be buying some houses. Mm -hmm. you know? I said, really? Why? You know, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. It was weird. And I mean, I'm an investor. I've been doing this for a long time. He said, well, you know, there's some really good deals out there and uh, there's some buyers. Ah. Now, that's what I didn't know. I said, there's really buyers out there for this stuff? They came back? Yeah, they came right. <laughs> he said, there are fewer and further between, but they're there. So I said, you know, I started looking. I'm going to tell you a little story about this house, you know. I started looking online, and I found one that uh, looked pretty good online through a realtor. And, I mean, it was an older house, but everything inside was brand new. The mm. new kitchen. I, I don't think I've told this story before, but it's one of my favorite. Yeah. Uh, new kitchen, new bathrooms, new carpet, new paint, new roof. I mean, yes, the house was built in the 60s, but wow, it needed a new range. Mm. That's it. Wow. Nice little neighborhood, kind of quiet. So I, I put an offer in. You know, I saw it online. I said, price looks good. I'll tell you the price in a minute. And it's three-bedroom, two-bath, two-car, carport, nice little 
flat level lot, good house for a good, for a family, something you'd want to live in, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, so I put my offer in full price and the, and the, the bank accepted it and, you know, thousand dollars down and so forth. And so they accepted the offer and I said, wow, I guess I better go look at this. <laughs> Cause you hadn't even looked at no, it. No, not you really. Been there. You didn't put your toes in the dirt yet. I want to go see, uh, now, you know, you got to verify things that you see on the internet because you can't always, you know, believe it. Right. You know, that's you, for you sure. know it might be some French guy that's not really French. <laughs> that's right. And, uh, we, um, we, we, we doesn't mean hello. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Bonjour. Anyway, um, so I drove down and looked at this house and I'm thinking, open the front door. Look at the roof's brand new. Open the door. New carpet, new paint, new, just like wow. it's. Just like it is pictured. And I said, wow, this is fantastic. Mm. Now, the question is, it's, you know, it's probably 15, 1,800 square feet. Decent mm-hmm. size. Mm-hmm. How much did I pay for that? How, no. Uh, what year, 2010? How much did I write the contract for? 2010? 2010, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, 25,000? That, that'd be a good good number in and you know, I did a few of those at twenty five too. This one was eighteen thousand oh dollars. Eight wow. uh, specifically eighteen thousand two hundred dollars. Wow. Oh, I, wow. I'm looking and I said, Holy moly, there's more than that in the renovation call. You know, yeah. just the renovation. Yeah. Uh so I said I walked out on the front porch and I just said, Yes. Hell heck yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yes. Yeah. Of course, I had I had nothing. I had no buyers. I had no list. I had no marketing. I had nothing because you know I'd stepped out for a minute. Yeah. And, and the guy said, "Get back." So, I, I walked over. I did go to swing by Home Depot and picked up one of those for sale by owner signs. I put my number on it, stuck it in the front yard, as just a symbol. Right. You know, right. really, of more than anything else. I'm back. And then, <laughs> two. Yeah. So uh, I said, you know, I'm I'm doing this. Don't know how exactly, but. You know, yeah. So two days later, this guy calls me up out of the blue and heard from him for five years. He said, I'm looking for a, you know, a house, and, you know, down on the south side, you know, I'm thinking, okay, I hesitate for a minute. I said, well, you know, I, I think I've got one <laughs> that you'll like, you <laughs> know, I'm pretty sure you're going to like it. I said, meet me down there tomorrow. And, uh, he gave me, I said, look, we, we negotiate a little bit. I said, well, I need cash now. <laughs> and one eight hundred cash now. That's right. I need cash now. TM. Yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, and I said for that I will give you a heck of a deal on this house, you know. And so he ended up owning that thing for like twenty one thousand. Wow. He had he said go meet me at my office. Handed me cash. Reached into his tweed jacket, pulled out an envelope, handed me cash for the contract to that house. So mm-hmm. I sold the contract to him. Mm-hmm. Done deal. Like that. Done, done, done deal. Done. The point was, it was 09 and oh, no, 010. It was no 010. It was 10, 2010. Yeah, yeah. And uh, supposedly there's no buyers in 2010, but you know what? There's always buyers. That's right. There's always sellers. There's always houses. So that's right. And it and it worked out. Obviously, it was the beginning of what we're doing today. Yeah. Nine years later. Yep. You know, and really, that's all it. That's all it takes. It's I didn't just, mean to take up so much. No, I mean, that's a great story. I mean, yeah. that's a perfect story. It, it, I mean, it had all the elements of everything we talked about today. You don't know. You didn't have all this stuff. You just acted. You didn't know how it was going to happen, but it happened. You needed cash, and it came. That's right. You know, and the what buyer What was that came. saying that your phone says over there? You know, desire is the only prerequisite. Want. Want, want is the only prerequisite to get what you want. Right. Now, the other point to that was it came from a realtor. You know, yeah. Realtors are a great resources. The guys that understand investing. Now, Sammy, do you ever wind up with pocket listings? Because that's you know every every investor wants to work with an agent that you know can get or has pocket listings. Uh, you know the pocket listings. I, I'm not genuinely a fan of uh, just because again my obligation is usually to my sellers, mm-hmm. and if it's a pocket listing, then it's not getting the maximum most money. exposure you know, from people who are qualified. So uh, when it comes to that, I really would prefer to put it on the open market just so you have all the options for people to come and purchase it. And not to mention, real estate agents aren't looking for pocket listings. You know, they're more so looking 
uh, for, for listings that are listed, you know, because that's what they have access to. So maybe I asked you the, the question in the wrong manner. Sure. Do you ever wind up with properties that you say, you know, these people are asking this much. I think I might know someone who might be interested in that and then reach out to people that you work with. Absolutely. You know, when I'm cold calling all morning long, I do come across properties that are very fairly priced, you know, especially when I'm calling for sale by owners. Mm -hmm. And of course, all for sale by owners want is a buyer. You mm -hmm. know, they'll tell you that about 10 times. During yeah, the phone yeah. call. Uh, <laughs> you know, just in case you didn't hear the first time. Uh, so, um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, of course I have people like yourselves and other people that are looking for opportunities to renovate properties. So I said, yeah, you know, if it's priced correctly and it looks like it looks, then I'll, I'll bring somebody by in order mm -hmm. to, uh, to negotiate an offer with mm -hmm. you. Absolutely. Anytime there's an opportunity like yeah. that, I have a, a few people that I very much respect and I, and they've done work with me in the past. So I do want to loop them in on any opportunity that I see when I'm out there in the field. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Cause I know that, you know, we've done that a few times, a few times, you oh, know, yeah. and, um, I, I just, you know, and all three times were, were good opportunities for us. You know, they were really good opportunities. And that makes me happy. Of yeah. course. Yeah. yeah absolutely. And you know, the, the other part of that is, you know, having a realtor on your team you, or anybody, you know, but specifically realtors, because they bring a new perspective. Because you're just talking about this property over near uh, on Ponce or near Ponce. Mm -hmm. Right. Great area. Oh, my gosh. Fantastic area. And so you said, hey, you know, you can buy this and Airbnb it. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, what's wrong with that? Oh, my gosh. I had a, a seller that we closed with this past Friday, and he could have put on a tutorial, you know. He had bought this little duplex on English Avenue for mm -hmm. probably like 25000 two years ago, right? Put a minimal amount of money just to make it livable, right? Probably like fifteen thousand, maybe. So mm -hmm. he's in it for forty. Airbnb's the property for like two years for you know hundred bucks a weekend, right. depending on the event. Two hundred bucks a weekend, whatever. Five thousand, you know. You know, <laughs> Super, Bowl. Super Bowl, yeah. Oh man. <laughs> and he was, and as bad as a condition that I saw it in when I walked in, he was like, "Yeah, it's filled every weekend." I'm like, "You must be joking." And the best part about it is, we closed for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So he. Airbnb did it for two years, made it, made a bunch of money, right. and then sold it for even more money at the end of incredible. The yeah, amazing on English Avenue. I mean, yeah. and these were this was not that great a looking duplex. Just right. I'm just throwing it out there. Okay, well, it didn't look that good. So there's a lot of opportunities right now. And if you're a buyer with some money, this upcoming year is probably going to be one of the best years to buy in probably like ten years. I know? agree, and I think that'll. That'll lead into uh, 2021 as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm telling all the people that I know that have some money, if they're renting, they're thinking about buying, this is the year that you want to do it, this upcoming year. So really throw quick. Your, throw, out your, sorry, pardon me, throw out your contact information again real quick. Uh, I'd be more than happy to. Yeah. Thank you. My number is 305, 305, baby, 978-4249. Again, if you have any questions, uh, buying or selling, if you're a, a flipper, and you, I, and you want me to send you what I believe a property would sell for. If it's renovated, you want some ideas about the renovation, what around it has sold for top dollar pictures, anything I can do to help you, please call me, 305-978-4249. And one more quick thing yes. before the end here. We have another seminar, Success in Your First 30 Days, October the 19th, realestate360show.com for more information. You got to go there, guys. Thanks for, thanks for listening and watching. Talk to you soon. Peace.